Hey friends, in this video, we're going to talk about why germs are good for you and why you should stop over sanitizing your body and everything you come into contact with. And I know as we're recording this, we are in the middle of a pandemic. So what I'm saying may seem very strange, but I'm hoping that you'll hear me out and you will also become less fearful like me of the beautiful microbial world that we all need to interact with in order for our immune systems to function well. I'm Brandi Falcon and I'm here every Friday offering you holistic self-care advice and providing you with natural solutions to modern health challenges. So if this is something that interests you, go ahead and subscribe to this channel and hit the bell so you're notified each time I upload a new video. So today I am defending nature and germs or microbes, which are a very important part of nature. I and many scientists believe that our communities have become too sterile to the point where our health is being harmed, especially that of our children. So here's four reasons why you should stop obsessively disinfecting. Number one is that the vast majority of microbes we come in contact with are benign or beneficial. And this is upward of 97% of bacteria, viruses, fungi that we come into contact with either do not do anything, they're neutral to us, or they're actually beneficial. And our microbiome, which is the population of beneficial microorganisms in our gut and all over our skin, is actually introduced to us in the birth canal as we leave our mother's bodies. And they're important, especially the gut bacteria, because they're like generals of an army. You consider the white blood cells and the immune system in general to have tanks and missiles it's the microorganisms that are actually directing function. So this is one of the many reasons why we need to be promoting natural vaginal births. So we're giving our babies a head start with the development of their immune systems. We can also be choosing to delay baths of newborns in the hospital. Again, so we're not stripping their skin of these beneficial microorganisms that were inoculated by the mom. It's why we can encourage extended breastfeeding so our babies and young children continue to get a nice dose of probiotics, this healthy bacteria especially, that they get from mother's milk. And then as children grow older, and for us adults too, we need to have constant exposure to microorganisms in the soil, in fermented food, from pets and farm animals, and also with human interaction. We need hugging and kissing. We need to interact with each other's microorganisms in order to regulate our immune health. Number two is that lack of microbial exposure can be causing chronic disease. So this is the hygiene hypothesis, and you may have heard of this, it's quite popular, and that when we have a lack of exposure to microorganisms, there are greater incidences of asthma, allergies, autoimmune disorders, and even obesity and other um, chronic diseases as well. And many studies have been done with Amish families. And there's one interesting one from the New England Journal of Medicine from 2016, where they studied two traditional farming families, the Amish and the Hutterites, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So the Amish tend to use more traditional ways of working the fields with animals and using hand tools. The Hutterites, on the other hand, use a lot of tractors and machines to do the work. And compared to the Hutterites, the Amish had far less incidence of asthma. The researchers also tested the blood of each of the children 
and found that the Amish children had way more white blood cells, which we know are key to fighting infections. So the study authors theorized that the Amish children had more white blood cells because they were exposed to more microorganisms and this boosted their immune system. We're halfway there and I'm curious to know before we go on to number three, what you feel about the microbial world. Is it something that scares you and you want to keep your house as clean as a hospital or if this is something you're willing to ease up on as you learn more? So the number three reason why you should stop disinfecting so much is that bleach and other disinfectants can cause systemic damage to your body and actually increase the rate of infections. So here's another interesting study that I'll have to read off for you. Um, this is in 2015, the Occupational and Environmental Journal of Medicine studied the effects of bleach used in homes of more than 9,000 kids, ages 6 to 12. And this is in the Netherlands, Finland, and Spain. And they found that the incidence of infections such as the flu, tonsillitis, sinusitis, and pneumonia was more prevalent in the homes where bleach was used. And we also know that many cleaning chemicals are known or suspected carcinogens. Many are endocrine disruptors, which means that they affect our hormone regulation and they can drastically decrease our immunity since when you're killing everything from these pretty effective um, disinfectants, they will kill everything, <laughs> viruses, bacteria, but that means that they are depleting your body of the good bacteria as well. So when we don't have those generals to direct the immune system, our immunity decreases and we are more likely to get sick. And then number four, and this is actually a scary one and one that should be taken very, very seriously, is that we are pressuring these microorganisms to mutate, to evolve, and to form resistance. This means we are pressuring them to get better at infecting us. All antimicrobial soaps, hand sanitizers, even the pharmaceutical drugs that are meant to treat and prevent these infections are threatening the populations of microorganisms and they want to live just as passionately as we do and nature is very very smart smarter than we are <laughs> so while we have made many advances in medicine many miraculous advances we cannot control nature and chemicals like triclosan, which is an antimicrobial, it has been banned from hand soaps by the FDA, but it is still in toothpaste, many popular conventional toothpaste and other products, and it goes under another name. This chemical is so purified that it's easy for bacteria to recognize it and form a resistance to it. And this is what a superbug is. Surely you've all heard of MRSA. There have been studies on people who use triclosan products that show that the chemical actually ends up in nasal secretions. And because of that, MRSA, which is an antibiotic resistant bacteria, tends to colonize in the nose because the triclosan it's not affected by it, so it tends to colonize there, infecting the keratin and collagen, and then this infection becomes really hard to treat because we don't have effective medicine for it. So what do you do with this information? I'm hoping that it helps us all relax and to focus on the things that are really important, which is not killing everything in the environment. It's building up our defense. So you can focus on simple hand washing with a mild soap, which is enough to remove possible pathogens from the hands without stripping the skin of its important microbiome and you can focus on building your immunity. And I'll queue up a video here at the end that I did a few months ago that will give you specific steps on how to do that. 
If you were to let go of your sanitizing efforts, at least some of them, if you're noticing that they are extreme after our little talk here, and instead focus on building up your health, I know that you will live with more confidence, less fear, and you will have a greater trust in your body and in nature. It's important that we think of future consequences from our actions right now. Because if we keep obsessively cleaning our bodies and our environment as we are now, we are going to see an increase in infections in the future, not because of a lack of social distancing, but because pathogens are getting stronger and smarter and we are becoming more weak. So I know this is a lot of tough love, but I'm hoping that you found this information interesting. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up and let me know what you think of it in the comments below. And before you go, you can pick up my stress relieving acupressure guide that you can get in the description below. You can also check out my Facebook essential oil lifestyle group that I will link up in the description as well. And on that page, there's a lot of education about how essential oils can be a safe and effective alternative to many of the cleaning solutions that you're using right now. And they create a healthy microbial environment in your home while actually boosting your health. So next week, we're gonna be talking more about green cleaning. I'm gonna give you a few recipes too, so I hope you'll check that out. And in the meantime, you can watch these other videos that will help support your holistic health. Take care.